Now I will talk about the organs from digestive system that produce hormones. And then I will talk about the kidneys, adrenal gland and sex hormones. Let's remove this part of colon because we want to see this over here. Let's say you are hungry and your glucose level is dropping. Your body wants to increase that level. But there are so many other things such as essential substances as vitamins and essential amino acids as well. But we're not going to go into that right now. Basically, we are interested where are the hormones produced and which hormones actually control this. So let's say this is where your food is coming. Your stomach will produce ghrelin that will stimulate your appetite. Once the food reaches the stomach, it will discover that stomach is actually producing the gastric acid. And that is stimulated by the gastrin hormone and also by the histamine hormone. As you know, your stomach is not just a simple bag that carries food. It's actually made out of muscles that eventually have to contract to push food further and to mix it as well. This action is stimulated by the hormone endothelin. The gastrin production and these contractions are actually inhibited by the hormone somatostatin. So let's say you eat a donut and it's a very nice looking donut. Like in these American movies, their police officers, they always eat extremely nice looking donuts. Well, after all these hormones and all these effects of these hormones, this donut would look nothing like the nice little American donut. It would be completely crushed and dissolved and mixed. And after that, it would go into duodenum. So this food here is carrying all the acid from the stomach with itself and it's entering duodenum. So duodenum doesn't like all that acid attacking its walls. So it produces bicarbonate, which actually neutralizes the acid. The production of bicarbonate is accomplished by the liver, pancreas, and duodenum itself. And this production is stimulated by the hormone secretin. So what now? We have neutralized the acid and we have our donut that looks more like a smoothie or something. We want to digest food further, so we need the bile from the gallbladder and we also need some enzymes from pancreas. This is accomplished by the hormone called cholecystokinin. And cholecystokinin can also tell our brain that it had enough of food and it doesn't want to eat anymore. And that's why you sometimes eat and you're not full and you feel hungry. But after 20, 30 minutes, you feel not hungry anymore. But let's go back five hours ago before while you were still hungry. Pancreas was actually producing glucagon, which was trying to raise your glucose level on its own by producing glucose in liver. So pancreas now is not producing glucagon. It's going to produce insulin, which will still increase your glucose level, but not by producing it, but by absorbing it from the digestive tract. Liver also can produce an insulin-like growth factor, which actually acts similarly to insulin, but it also regulates cell growth and development. Now try to remember up there, I have mentioned the somatostatin, and somatostatin was actually blocking the gastric acid production, and it was also blocking the contractions of the smooth muscles. Now, pancreas can also produce somatostatin. And guess what? Here it is also a blocker and it blocks the production of insulin and glucagon. And now we come to a really important part and that is the angiotensinogen that is produced in liver. To watch the third part of the video, click here. To watch my previous video, click here. These lessons come as part of my software that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. If you don't want to purchase it, then at least make sure you subscribe here for new free content that I release regularly on my channel. Thank you.